Hello and welcome to Off the Press this Monday morning, the program where we take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it. And with me to do so this morning is Ekene Ezeji. Good morning, Ekene. Good morning. And welcome from the open, the, what was it called again? <laughs> Lagos Open. The Lagos Open. I How hope did to go, go back there this morning. <laughs> okay, yes, you were telling <laughs> me that. I mean, the sun is shining, so we're hoping we'll have the okay. finals today. The rains wasn't, uh, it wasn't on your side at all yesterday. It, no, everybody was waiting patiently, but the rains weren't planning to mm. stop. Anyways, mm. today is bright and sunny, hopefully. Yeah will be. Yeah. All right, let's go to the business of uh, the newspaper review. So we're starting off with this day, and it says the top story there says, Sean Telco's imposing charges on ESSD transaction. It may fill it tells banks or displayed already there on your screen, and that's on the front page, but it's continued on, the, on page 10 of the uh, this day newspaper. NERC, CBN consider ways to monitor electricity market funds. As you can see, displayed there, it's on page 10. Now the big story, there is battle for implementation of minimum wage moves to states. Governors non-committal on commencement date await federal government secular on agreement with labor. That's on the front page, as you can see there, but it's continued on page 5. Now presidency intervenes in controversy over police recruit recruitment. Force acts recruits to hold on. That's on the front page there, but it's continued on page 5. And then down below you see YFM orders oppose governor's push for FAC in dollars. That's on page five. Okay. Hmm. Let's do this. Okay. Where do we begin this morning? Let's talk about the minimum wage because everybody, okay. we've been monitoring the minimum wage saga mm -hmm. since I think two weeks ago mm. um, when there was a threatened strike. Uh, but thankfully they, they suspended the strike they while negotiations place, were means. taking place. Um, now we hear that they're going to meet, I know they're going to meet in Enugu this week today. to mm. discuss the state implementation. Even though sometimes I feel it's, it's a little slow because when you read you know the account they said they're going to discuss modalities for mm. the you know so it's almost like you're still taking to take and you're saying, what were you doing all the time you were negotiating before april so sometimes you, you feel a bit like people are not very competent in the way they mm. go about things because all this time people are still even though we hear it will be backdated mm. whenever it's instituted so no one will lose out but you know you get a sense of Stalling. The long stretch. Yeah, you want to go to Enugu. And we know Enugu Airport isn't mm. in flow, so by the time you get through Asaba and you, know, you travel there, a lot of time is spent having meetings, having discussions. Already I hear that the states are saying that they don't want to have a different rate to the federal. Mm -hmm. So let's see what they come up with. But I we're thankful when I saw the, um, do you say the concessions that were made? I felt mm. it was reasonable. You know, the, They've come to a middle ground. Yeah, time. because um, the Labour Congress were starting at something like 29% yes. increments, mm. but they've reached 23. I think the, the government were, or, you know. They shifted ground. Yeah, they were, the I think they, there was a 10, at least more than 10 percent, percent difference, yes. but they've actually come somewhere in between, which shows that hopefully we're, we're ready to do business. Mm. So let's watch that and, and hope they resolve it sooner mm. rather than later. And see what the state comes up with also. Mm. And the implementation will be fast and we don't exactly. see another Exactly. And it hitches after that, yes. Mm. I agree. Mm. Okay, so we woke up to this message of uh, you will now be charged uh, for your USSD transactions uh, yes. according to your bank, with, yes, with your bank permission, something yes, like that. Did you see that? Yes, I, I'm sure because they saw MT and everybody sat mm. up, but I hear that all that um, telecom networks. networks have begun implementing it, so which is troubling for me. You know, they've been implementing it without mm. our knowledge, but as soon as MTN step into the ring, it's highlighted. Maybe walk us all up. Yeah, because uh, some people have argued that because MTN have a large number of subscribers, it's going to affect a lot more people. Of course, mm. uh, but the fact is, should they really have been allowed to implement it without our knowledge? There's yeah. something very wrong with and that. You know, there are so many things. Can I? While we're talking about, there's so many things we just wake up to, especially when it comes to mobile uh, service providers. You know, all the charges, mm -hmm. sometimes yeah, really too, really really too. Too. sometimes you yes. don't even know, you didn't even authorize it, but yes. you know. So and this is why, you know, some people say, well, why are Nigerians so apathetic? It's because there's so many things happening that don't seem to Coming be Coming to us And for you to notice. be informed first about your rights and then to challenge them, it takes so much. And, you know, we wish we had more bodies like Sarah Pood get in between these service providers and us and, mm. you know, just break it down for us and fight on our behalf because the average person is already bogged down with what they have to... I mean, for, let's just even look at the details of the story. Mm. Um, Apparently, from what uh, CBN are saying, God, God, Godwin God, Mefele, that he actually refused when they tried to negotiate for this USSD charge. charge. He said, you know, that they shouldn't push it on because essentially what you have is the banks have struck a deal with the telecoms mm. um, companies and said, look, do our transactions for us and 
negotiate whatever version. benefit you can get. And so the, the telecoms company are trying to get the upper hand by saying, look, we want to charge this much to mm. the consumer. But CBN refused. But despite that, he said, they, not only did they not follow his recommendation, they marked it up by 300%. Yes. How does that happen? Who is supervising these this. telecoms companies? You know, who is reining them in? Because we can't have the banks charging us and then the telecoms charging us. And at mm. the same time, you're telling us that we must transact online. So if you push us to a much more electronic transactional mm -hmm. you know, uh, I mean, platform, and we're being model. slammed there, you know, of course you can see why the government are nervous because it, it doesn't take much to see that if you keep pushing people to mm. the brink, at some point they're going to have enough and say, That's true. we've had enough of this. That's so true. Um, I think he's right to step in. I think you know, they should arrest this. And we need to understand who is holding these telecoms company to account. Mm. I'm glad it's been brought to the Yeah, there was a lot of uh, Twitter conversation about it yesterday also. And, and rightly so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the place where you almost get answers yeah. almost immediately. They said there was a bit of a revolt on mm. Twitter, which is why, you know, that's why uh, maybe, rightly maybe we're, that's why we're looking at things again. On the front page mm -hmm. of the papers also. And I think so. they should go back to the previous telecoms company and arrest them as well. So mm. not just MTN, but every other telecoms yeah. company that Especially has... Those who have implemented maybe they could even pay us Compensation for having charged us illegally. Without our knowledge. Yeah, without our knowledge. No permission at all. Mm. All right, so um, that's it. The uh, presidency intervenes on the controversy over police recruitment. That's on page, in on the front page there, as I displayed. And any thoughts on that? Or just Again, it's just this, it reminds me a bit of what we've just discussed. That seems to be a kind of, um, do you Power say? Tussle. Yeah, and, and, and the fact that it's not so. seamless. You'd mm. think people who would work together, and we're having to hear, uh, we're having to hear that they haven't actually, it's not synchronized. Mm. So why are is it 10,000 police yeah. proposed to yes. be recruited? 10, and the president, you know, and people are, you know, it seems that we're not in agreement about the recruitment. Whose process. authority? Who's supposed to clear this? Uh, yeah, who, why are people death? taking actions? Why is <laughs> everyone acting as though they law to themselves? So mm. I, I hope at the end of these reports, we get to understand where the ball was dropped, mm -hmm. who, who broke the link, so to speak, and let them be penalized. So we, we get a sense that things are in a kind of structured mm, format. And then there's yeah. a due process, format, yes, yeah. I agree. There's a due process, who's supposed to do what so that... Uh, yeah, and they're, they're following that process as well. Yeah. All right, that's it for this day. But on the back page, very quickly, there is a column there by by Ijo um, Mugugu, and it says Nigeria's wrong-headed uh, budget. Uh, please grab a copy of uh, this day newspaper and find out what that's about. As we move on to the Punch uh, newspaper now, it says World Bank approves Nigeria's uh, $3 billion per sec sector loan. That's on page 24. CBN opposes MTN over a mobile banking transaction access on page 24. Sealed mats. Uh, Lagos car dealers demand 10 billion naira from customs. That's on page 11. And terrorists smuggling fish into Nigeria. That's on page 8, according to the army there. And then uh, minimum wage. NLC states uh, chairman meet t Tuesday. Talks with government. Uh, governors begin. That's on page two. And they say, we won't accept lower adjustments. State chapters of NLC saying. And then protesters uh, said, it's a picture story there, protesters set a blaze on fire, uh, uh, protesters set buses on fire during a riot over an increase in the price of metro uh, tickets. That's in Chile, Santiago. That's a picture from Saturday's uh, protest. And then flooding, Lagos Ogun uh, brainstorm on Oyan's dam's uh, water release. That's on page 36. And APC PDP exchange words on marking their 8 billion naira interchange on page 12. And Bonnie grooms slums at reception, dies at hospital. Oh, that's so sad. On page 5, as you can see displayed there. And yet another sad story of 19 killed in Lagos, Undo Plateau, and Abia crashes. These stories, uh, you find them on pages 4 and five of the Punch newspaper. We already talked about the CBN thing. So. Yes, yes. I mean, mm. I just quickly talk about the Ebony groom. Yeah. It's such a sad story when I you agree. hear about, you know, people on the brink of starting a new life. Happiness, so and, to speak. you know, unexpectedly, something tragic like this happens. Mm. Uh, you know, you wonder, was it the stress of preparing for the marriage? Sometimes I tend to think that it's very stressful. Sometimes we, we put so much on the day. So we don't much. know, but um, we I don't just know feel so sorry for case. the bride in this mm. situation, because I'm sure she didn't envisage 
that she'll be burying her. Oh, she, could she even call him her husband because they haven't, have they, have they well. sealed the, the vows? And so mm. it's a real sadness that rather than celebrating, you're having to. Um, mm. But that's Such life, you know, so we have to be prepared for the unexpected. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of the other stories. There's that flooding, there goes. Well, the flooding, uh, how can you miss the flooding? Yeah, you know, not the, at all. Because people <laughs> have remarked, obviously, that it could be a sign of global warming. It is. I, I, I think, I believe it is, okay, because, because at this October, time of the year, exactly. <laughs> someone mistook it for rainy season. I'm yes. like, no, rainy season is in. June. You shouldn't see the amount of rains on a consistent basis. basis. Yeah, and it could rain, you know, 24 hours. I mm -hmm. mean, yesterday being a case in point, no one would have expected that, you know, rains that started on Thursday or even before mm -hmm. would carry on through the weekend onto Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, so like the, you mentioned the Lagos Open, we had people seated expecting that any minute now the oh. rains would stop but it wasn't going to stop. Mm. You know, I occasionally saw a peak of sunlight yeah. and then it went no, back it behind the clouds. Brave. So we're grateful that today we're having a bit mm. more sunshine and hopefully it will last mm. for the rest of the week. But again, what that is revealing, I can, if, if I may say, is the state of, you know, planning. Okay. Because, or unpreparedness. Yes, and unpreparedness. Mm. There's so much... I mean, Lagos now, exactly. it's clear to us, cannot withstand a one week straight rain mm. because the floods everywhere is just frightening. You know, it's sad in a way because some parts of the world would, I don't know, they would, they would beg for this amount of rainfall. Mm. And we have it in abundance. You know, we, I wish we could do something Isn't with it. Isn't there a way to harvest, collect all of yes, this water? You know, even hydro, somewhere. electricity, something. Because mm. we're not able to, sometimes it's this thing, like you say, planning ahead. We're not planning ahead. We're not thinking because we're dealing with the floods now. But is someone thinking about the floods? You know, next year. We'll you know, deal the with next it round again. of floods. Because mm. Clearly, I mean, if you drive through the roads, you can see that drainage is still a problem. You know, we don't a have enough because one. the minute it rains for more than four hours, you have a pool of water rising up pretty high. It's you know, crazy. so there's clearly a problem with drainage. There's clearly a problem with refuse that gets that goes and mm. blocks the existing drainage. What are we doing to deal with this problem? Are we waiting till the next flood and then we'll comment on it? So yeah, yeah we do need to plan ahead a lot more. All right, and then the terrorists smuggling their fish. No, it's, it's a bit. <laughs> I saw that story and I wasn't sure whether it was funny or what is it an I indication? I yeah, what, what is it again yeah. about them having to smuggle in fish? Maybe it tells us more about the profile of the terrorists that these are desperate people who, because at the end of the day, what are they going to do with the fish? So are they they're going out to of sell cash? the fish. Yeah, I mean, I think they're going to sell the fish because why oh. smuggling fish? Because at some point, if you remember, I remember mm. we had this conversation on this program uh, maybe a so, couple of months ago when the army warned that people should stop having these transactions with them. You okay. know, selling of fish and again they are back today maybe it's just an indication that I'm they are sorry, running I keep out laughing, of cash but yeah, I mean, we'll I think, I mean, you know, be happy if they are running out of somehow it makes them a little more <laughs> vulnerable a bit like human beings mm. you know yes they're terrorists they branded them terrorists because clearly they're putting people's lives in danger so we yeah. mustn't feel for them but they're like every one of us in a mm. sense that they are looking for ways to make struggling. money uh, if only they could realize that the people they're terrorizing are in the same boats mm. with them so uh, you know you're trying to make money off us you're, you're terrorizing us you're kidnapping you we are all in the same boat Situation. so you know perhaps Maybe we should all look for a holistic solution solutions. rather than each every man for himself you know mm. smuggling in fish let's try and find a way to to drive the economy so that all of us benefit so mm -hmm. it's funny but it's it's sad as well yeah all right and um, there's something here i skipped it sorry Econo economists and farmers disagree on border closure benefits and uh, losses rice farmers promise price crash record bumper harvest that's on pages uh, 23 and 26 there. Yeah, I mean, who can miss the, the whole mm. bit of border closure? The discussions are going back and forth. Some would argue that it's a good thing, e even if it's a temporary measure, just mm. to give us a chance to build up our own, our own. border. But I think most people have, uh, the argument I've had made more consistently is that the reason for the border closure is to strengthen our border control, mm. our taxes, our, you know, the people security who are there, also. security. Um, it's not because we're trying to avoid, because people have also pointed out that if you close borders, we're, we're one of the largest exporters to ECOWAS. Mm -hmm. So if we close borders, we can't get our goods out just as we can't get goods in. So yeah, we suffer true. as much as, you know, the other African countries, Ghana, one of the big uh, uh, labor groups in Ghana are threatening that they should ban Nigerian products mm. because they're not happy with the fact that we seem to be calling the shots mm. because they rely on Nigerian goods. So it's to our benefit not to keep this uh, border closure on for too long. Um, but again, I pray that uh, at the same time as we're taking this drastic step, because it seems like a bold move, I'd like to think it has been thought out. Mm. I'd like to think that, you know, before you close the borders, you already had plans no, to strengthen the security around the border, and you're already effecting those plans. You're not just, you know, you close waiting. borders and then you wait for a reaction, and then later you, you know, I hope we're moving simultaneously. As you're mm. closing borders, you're strengthening your security, and you're getting ready to open borders, and you're giving instructions as to when those borders will be, be open, open, so that we better 
benefit from this closure. Mm -hmm. As to rice, obviously we're all waiting with bated breath because Christmas is coming. Yes, I can. And if you see the price of rice now, it's everybody's business. That mm. price, you know, and sometimes you're getting rice with stones in them. So you're paying more for rice that you would have imported, but you're getting less value. So mm. again, where, where are people ready? Had they maybe queued our farmers? We're capable of destoning our rice. We're capable of harvesting large quantities I mean, of there rice. there are some local rice that, apart from tasting very well, mm -hmm. very good, they're, they're even healthier okay. because they have enough of the, mm. the roughage. So I just think we need to be more organized. We need to synchronize more. You know, some of the things we've discussed already this mm. morning, synchronize with the rice farmers, synchronize with the, you know, those involved, the stakeholders. So you say, well, look, we're closing borders now. Get ready to up your production. Mm. Get ready to improve your quality so that people now, even when we open borders again, they'll still go back and they'll stay with your rice. Yeah. What you don't want is the minute borders are open, we'll so quickly ditch, let's go back ditch our local products. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. This was because what we didn't have an option. Yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. this is your chance to make, uh, you know, sell, you know, sell us your products in such a way that we'll stay with you even after the borders are open. Mm -hmm. I hope we take advantage Improve of Improve the standard and again, make it affordable. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you know. All right. Uh, so I think that will be it for the Punch newspaper. Okay. Just behind, sorry, very quickly, it's uh, CBN and the two 2.6 billion uh, dollars or 26 billion dollars diaspora remittances. Uh, please grab a copy of the Punch newspaper and find out what this is about. I'm trying to get, oh, it's by Henry Boyle, displayed there. So we'll move on now to the Vanguard newspaper. Again, um, foreign portfolio investment in equities shrinks by 34%. And then we have border closure. Mm -hmm. How neighboring countries worked against Nigeria. Already displayed there, you can see it. That story is on page five. A border shut down breeding criminality in Seme. That's on page 41. That story is there. And then uh, Langote backs doctorate degree. Uh, okay. Um, you see the picture story of there with uh, Governor Obaseki and all this. And then a Papa task team, uh, the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers on extortion spree as gridlock worsens. That's on page 10. That story is on page 10. And OMSL setting the record straight. And that's it. This looks like, it just looks like we don't have so much here. Yeah, but, yeah, but I, I'm, have... my eye is still on the CBN and the, believe it or not, the foreign remittances, which okay. you read on the back of the Punch newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because that amount, $2.6 billion, mm -hmm. dollars, is actually almost as much as what we're borrowing to invest in the power sector. So when you look at that, we should be courting diasporan investment mm -hmm. more because clearly there is a market there. People want to send money home. They want to, you know, inv so that money, that flow inwards should be something we should court mm -hmm. a lot more. Some would even say to go as far as during the elections to give these diasporan Nigerians a voice in the electoral I think they should. I process because agree. If, if they're contributing this much mm -hmm. to, the, to our economy, then they should, have, yeah, they should have a stake in who comes in into our politics yeah, and governance. So this is why we need to go electronic. I know mm -hmm. I'm taking a big, a big leap here, but mm -hmm. we need to go electronic so that more Nigerians key into the process who are also investing mm -hmm. in, in, the, in, in the country. So I think that's uh, a figure to keep an country. eye on. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they should not only should CBN keep an eye on that, they should find a way to court that investment, whether in real estate, because clearly a lot of Nigerians still have their eye at home in mm. case things turn around for the better True. they they're making you know investments here and keeping an eye on our country so it caught that kind of investment caught things like um, health insurance for their um, elderly ones because the reason a lot yeah. of us who a lot of Nigerians who live abroad are still eyeing Nigeria is because they have family loved ones here sure. and I'm sure they would like to make provision for them in terms of health care some of them have to fly their loved ones abroad and you know the cost of that so mm. if we can make sure that health tourism comes this way rather than the other way there's money to be to made. Benefit. Yeah, there's mm. money to be made. Right. Okay. So. Is there anything I've overlooked task, here? Task. Papa, um, you know, the team saying there's extortion spree as gridlock worsen. Oh. Uh, you know, the <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we know that the, the, the remember when the, the ultimatum was given to clear that yes. path, and we all said to ourselves, "You haven't dealt with the, the, the main problem." Yeah, the main so, problem. So, so just to give an Go ultimatum. And how long ago was that ultimatum? <laughs> to give an ultimatum, again. yeah, without dealing with the underlying problem, it's just papering over the cracks. Mm. So we know that uh, we we sensed, and and it's obviously been brought to light that there was some sort of an extortionist program going mm. on, some sort of a tool or tariff system set up you know, it, albeit illegitimately, where people are being held up. Mm. And because they're desperate to retrieve their goods, they'll pay whatever it takes, because yeah. relative to 
uh, incurring demerit, you pay. Yeah. You know, but it doesn't mean that it's right. And you get the feeling that... And it that, doesn't solve the problem either. Well, also, this is part of why we say corruption is, is a big problem. It's like a hole in the bucket. So no matter how much water, water you, you pour, pour it you go just, away. You, you know, you, can't sustain. You, you, you know these people are doing this. Even we, who don't have access to a lot of the dealings going on, suspect that this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. And people who have dealt with them tell you that this is what's going yeah, on. I mean, why don't you go in with that. all the authority you have and nip that problem in the bud? Why are we pandering to it? Why are we pretending it doesn't exist? And so you're back again. <laughs> you know, and it has worsened, mm. which means, yes, you've just, you've shouted, but your back is not as good as your bite. So mm. here they are again, behaving like gangsters. And that's very unfortunate. So I, really. I really, this is a warning to us that we need to deal with problems definitively if we Go actually to hope to make, problems. yeah, especially now that people are looking for ways to make a living, you know, and it seems as if every man is really for himself. You need to take a stand and take a firm stand with the border uh, closure, take so. a firm stand. Otherwise, all you're doing is just, you're driving away the, the crowds and then they come back even more reinforced, which mm. is what I think has happened there. All right. Okay. So oh, at the back of the um, vanguard today is the sports news. United and Liverpool winning run. Uh, please uh, <laughs> grab, grab a copy. Uh, yeah, I read a bit about that. Okay. All right. <laughs> the man you um, captain seemed to be gloating a bit. You know, okay. uh, he's saying oh that he's glad he stopped them. It was just it was one one. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like they really they beat them well. or anything. And uh, it's almost like he's gloating, saying well that when when he, he only he you know reserves the right to have that kind of winning streak. When he when he represented Chelsea, he had. That kind did of, that. Uh, but Liverpool now, nah, and he knows that Liverpool really wanted to win at this particular game. But of course, but we denied them it. that pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and he said they came looking for meat, but they got fish. <laughs> you know, that, it's, it's, it's competitive. They didn't get the whole the yeah, exact thing they wanted. Uh, it's funny, yeah. Okay, so did we take a look at the Nation newspaper? No. Okay, so very mm. quickly, uh, the Nation newspaper pension fund hits 9.44 trillion naira on page seven, uh, and there's 6.81 trillion naira invested in securities. ASO plans showdown with the federal government. That news is on page two. Union opposes payment system. Or your APC and PDP clash over 8 billion naira project is on page 41. Uh, dust over Iwo Road interchange. You see it already displayed there. Uh, by Elsa and uh, Kogi 2019. Kogi West Elders and Dust Bellows second term bid. Oshomale raising force alarm says by Elsa PDP. And then one feared killed as hoodlums attack Wada's convoy. This and more you find on pages uh, six of the nation newspaper now the big story there is nigeria rejects imf stance on forex restriction policy that's on the front page there and but this continued also on page seven and battle rages over margo's fate as efcc chairman forces seek termination of tenure by november the 11th agency recovers 939 billion naira in four years uh, you can see that story there and ncc of course stops mtn from charging customers uh, four naira for USSD, and you find that story on page eight. And OMSL setting the record straight. Uh, and then, any thoughts on this? Do I have time to deal with three so, stories here? Oh well, <laughs> I can. I let me start stories. with the best. Okay. Two. okay. Two well, I mean, again, this is a bold stance. Nigeria rejects IMF stance mm -hmm. on forex. Apparently, they're saying, look, basically generate or oh, whatever you have to manufacture, manufacture it here. So we're not going to open up the bottleneck, so to speak, to allow you to. Import yeah, yeah, goods and services or things that you can you can develop here. We want to keep that like bottleneck. Like toothpick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about you know maybe machinery mm -hmm. that you need that you can you know, put together, assemble here. Even if you bring the parts in. So mm. we're trying to discourage all this importing of foreign goods, services. You know, down to the very. If you're going to bring your business here, be ready to invest. Use us. Yeah, and use our, Yeah, which I feel is a bold stance. I hope we follow it through. I mm. hope we make it easy for these um, foreign investors to access these things that they need and not create a further bottleneck which then disincentivizes them from mm. coming in the first place. So you need to be you know, make, make sure it's attractive. Follow it through a bit like what we've been saying all day. Mm. So um, having said that, um, when you read the story of the Oyo APC and PDP clash, you, mm. you tend to sort of want to just put it aside because on the one hand, they argue what favors them and says, oh, you're spending too much money at this time when the economy is low. You're insensitive to the, the, the needs of the people. On the other hand, this, the other side argues, oh, you're insensitive to the commuters' needs. Mm. That's um, PDP. You know, you're insensitive. Com Almost so, sounded like political so in yes. a way, you know, you're, 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 mm. whose side are you both on? You're on your side. You're not really on our, our side. side. Let, let's you're try and find out agenda. where is the truth. It's somewhere in the middle. You know, clearly there's a financial constraint right now. But it's not to say you won't invest in infrastructure because we will still end up footing the bill if that infrastructure is it's not in not place done. by True. way of petrol, by way of, you know, damage to our cars. Mm -hmm. So, you know, definitely you need to put aside money. And I hear that um, the security 
um, funds that each state has is sufficient, which mm. is up to 50% of their funds they put aside and call security uh, funds. It, you know, dip into that and, and sort out something. the infrastructure and show us that you recognize where the shoe is pinching us. Mm. So yes. I, I, all right. Uh, okay. Have to stop there. <laughs> yes, we have to stop. Thank you very much. I'll just go through the complete spots. Uh, well, Ekene is going back to the Lagos Open. So I hope. I hope. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so Man United and Newcastle join race for Seamen and uh, among others. Please grab a copy of Complete Sports. And uh, Ekene, thank you very much for coming a on this morning. Pleasure as always. Uh, and this is where we are going to call it a wrap for this morning's of the press. We'll do this again uh, throughout the week. Um, every day, Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa. And this is always of the press. And I am Amaka Okoye.